All right, so here we go. I went on Amazon and bought this Eternabon tape. This is four inches wide, 25 foot roll. I have a 28 foot fifth wheel camper. And on the roof, we've got some cracks. It must have been in an accident prior where it must have hit a tree or something because it kind of damaged the front there. And that's also along on the outside. And they did use lap sealant to seal it up. But over time, the lap sealant gets dirty. It looks kind of ugly. So I'll show you. I went up there and scraped it off. And I had cleaned it off with a sponge around the edges. And we're going to lay down some of this Eternabond tape. This is a 10-year product. And essentially, you can either cut it down to be a little bit more narrow, depending on the area you're working on. But you just go up there, clean up the area. You can lay this over your lap sealant. Or you can clean off the lap sealant, remove it, and then put this on instead of. Um, <clears throat> it is UV resistant. And man, when it sticks, make sure it's where you want it to be because it will stick for a long time. So now I'm going to get up on the roof and kind of show you what I'm working with. All right, so welcome to my roof. Here is that Eternabond tape. You can see there, kind of on the inside. There's the part numbers. And what I did was I just threw up on the roof in the boxes. As you can see, one landed there. And of course, with luck being my luck, this one I threw up and it landed in my bucket of water. So I'm gonna let this one dry out until I get done with that roll. And uh, ah, one of those days, we'll get to play, we'll place in this stuff. Here's the back edge. You can see that there's cracks in the old lap sealant. Kind of all along there. Now I've gone through and cleaned this all up, let it dry for a while, except for there where the bucket, of course, spilled when I threw this into it. So now it's dried up. I'm gonna place some of that on top of there, overlapping both edges, and that'll seal it up. So here's my plumbing drain, or my plumbing vent, I should say. And you can see I'm going around it here. I'm working from back to front that way it's to keep all these front facing seams locked down so when you're driving down the road hopefully the wind doesn't catch it and kind of pull it up but you can see i'm going up onto the vent just to kind of seal around it where the major cracks are like this one so i'll go up here to make sure that it fully seals around there it's very malleable so just press down hard with your thumbs you can see it will seal around Pretty well of the, the old stuff just like that sealed up and over and now just press all around it will get kind of wrinkly when you're going around things like that but that's fine just press around it there's definitely not going to get any water in there and then now i'm going to go off to the straight parts i was going to start on the rear there because you should be starting rear to back but since I spilled that water back there, I'm going to let it dry a while. I'm going to work my way up to the front now and do places like this around any skylights that are cracked. And yeah, here we go. there you go. Again, I'm working from the back side of the camper to the front side just to prevent any lift from like the seam here. So I'm going to overlap over here to make sure that this doesn't lift with the wind. 
and I just kind of followed the line of the actual skylight and just pressed down really good because that's a good clean seam there or a good clean spot for it to stick to. And then just press down all around it, front and rear, all the little gaps, and then move on to the next piece. Do the sides and then do the front. <laughs> I like to tear it back little by little just to make sure I don't accidentally stick it to something I don't want it to stick to. I'll stick that down and then peel it back as I go. Stick, press, work out all the bubbles, <coughs> press around all the edges. Go really tight and hard. And it's always best if you do this in the heat of the day. It'll be more likely to be more malleable and stick better. Go back, stick down. If anybody's ever used sound deadening material, kind of the same thing. Like the car audio stuff. Same, super sticky, just not tar-based. You can buy rollers to roll this so you don't have to use your thumb. But I feel with my thumb I can get much tighter spaces. Press it down just as hard and get to all the little crevices much better. Make it a better seal. There we go. All finished up and around, overlapping, pressing down around everywhere that we can, making sure everything is stuck down. Now we've got that one, the vent done. Time to move to the front, to the front cap. All right, so here on the cap, you can tell they must have ran into a tree somewhere where it could have happened from that one accident over on that right side. But they never even sealed this one off, so I don't know if this is new or not. But you can kind of see it kind of cracks along there. So I'm going to take some of that Turnabon tape, put it directly on there. Make it look as good as possible because this will be visible from the front a little bit and same with down the side. Now on that one I actually trimmed down some of the lap sealant just to make it more level. I might even trim it down even farther. I'm still not sure yet. But I'm going to place it directly on top of the plastic. Make sure it's all clean, no dust. And lay it down. So you can see the front is cracking around the corners, down the side just a little bit. So I'll put some of on tape down the side just a little as well. Kind of help sell this up, make sure that we don't get any more water damage on the inside. So here we go. Just like that. So I took the turn on tape and I actually cut it down to about an inch wide because it was a small crack. Because where this is visible from the front, I don't want a big old honking piece of tape showing. Um, the less you can see the better. But you can see I overlapped it up here just to make sure that it seals at this point. And again, there's going to be a big strip of your on tape that's going over this as well. So that should help seal this portion. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same with that side using, so instead of a four inch wide, now it's a three inch wide. Again, I'm going to use as little as possible on each point that's front facing. And we're going to go from there. There we go. Got some around the solar panel. Skylights, vents, front. I need to get more for the antenna. We got it right there on the back. Super easy. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, so that was my experience with the Eternabon tape. I mean, as far as installation goes, I honestly don't think that you can get any easier than that. Now, as far as quality of holding and preventing leaks, that's something only time is going to be able to tell. Um, everything I've read on the internet, it's really 50-50. And on top of that, 
what you should do is take some of the Henry Tropical um, roof sealant. Make sure you redo your roof, especially if it's starting to do what's called peppering. And that's when you see black spots starting to come through. It looks just like peppers on your roof. And then to kind of double it up that way, a lot of people will use some of the lap sealant, let that dry. You're supposed to let it cure for 30 days before you put the Eternabon tape on it. But I honestly don't have time for that. We're heading into the end of October here in Utah. And cold months and winters just right around the corner. So I went ahead and just put the Eternabon tape over the lab sealant, the old lab sealant. But of course, cleaning and preparation is key. You're going to want to make sure that you prep all the areas. make Give it a good clean surface to stick to. And let's see how this winter does. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.